All right, so let's talk about some magnetic fields and wires. Um, there's a lab that we could do uh, that it, we haven't done yet, but that we could do, um, where we look at the relationship between the magnetic field and the radius, or at least in this case, the distance you are away from a particular set of wire. Um, if you do the lab, you find out that we end up with an inverse relationship between the magnetic field and the actual uh, radius. Um, there is an actual equation for it, and it's this little thing over here. Now, just right off the bat, to try to keep everybody from going nuts here, uh, really we've got the magnetic field is directly proportional to the current and inversely proportional to the radius. And then out here, we've got a little bit of a, a fudge factor. Okay. Now, this mu naught okay, is known as the permeability of free space. It is a constant. It is in uh, both the AP and the IB packets, so there's nothing to freak out about. Um, but you'll notice that you've got a 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7th Tesla meters per amp. The amps is on the bottom to cancel the current on the top. The uh, meters is on the top to cancel the meters from the radius on the bottom. And you're left with Teslas, which is our unit of um, magnetic field. Uh, you'll also notice that the 4 pi and the 2 pi, the pi's, will actually go ahead and, and cancel each other, okay? So, the calculation is fairly simple, but what exactly are we using it for? Well, if we had a wire that was, say, running 25 amps, okay, and we wanted to find, well, what kind of magnetic field does it produce at a point that is 10 centimeters away? Okay, well, go ahead and, and we can do the actual equation here. Um, we've got a constant. Here's our permeability of free space. Uh, here is your current. 2 pi stays on the bottom and our point 1 which allows us to solve for 5 times 10 to the negative 5th Teslas. Now this is a relatively easy type of problem. Okay, Just finding the magnetic field at a certain distance or a certain radius away from the wire. Um, where it gets a bit more tricky is if you have to find the field between two or more wires. Okay, so I, I've given you an example here where we've got two wires that are both in. So if we remember this, the curl rule. Here, let's do this for a second. The curl rule, okay, thumb is the direction of the current, and then my fingers curl in the direction of the field that's created. So if I was looking at this particular one, thumb down, and it's going to curl, it's curling this direction around that loop. Okay, this one, same way, it's still going clockwise, okay? But that means at this middle point from this wire, you're going to produce a field that is down. So there's a magnetic field down by wire 1. In this one, if we follow it around, it's going to be going up at that point. So there's a field up by 2. Now, as long as they are the same current and the same length of wire, then those should just cancel out, and we should end up with nothing there. Okay. Um, however, if they have different currents and different lengths, then we have to treat them like vectors. So if we have a situation like this, we'd have to subtract the two fields that are created by those different wires, if the current or the length was different. Now, a different situation here would be, okay, well, what happens if we have one in and one out. Well again, the one for in, the, the direction of the field is always clockwise, but for the one out, we're looking at it being counterclockwise. So that means at this point, you would experience a field down, and for this one, you would experience a field down. Therefore, we would have to add these two together in this particular case.